Hello and welcome to the Monday, June 26, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. Well, let's start with diaries. We actually had a number of good ones uh, this uh, weekend. First, a quick one by Guy. Guy found uh, two different Modi loader attachments with, well, a very different email ruses, actually. One uh, was an email failure message, one of those Office 365 failure messages that are often being used to then uh, trick users into opening attachments. The second one, uh, the message actually came from a magazine in Slovakia, sort of a lifestyle travel magazine. That email was all in Arabic, uh, interestingly enough. So uh, very different lures here. The attachment in both cases was a zip file that then turned out to be a Modi loader, which of course is one of those generic loaders that can load pretty much whatever malware you like. And Brad has written up a couple of incidents like this uh, before. More details, including screenshots of the emails, can be found in the diary. And talking about malicious emails, uh, Xavier found an interesting trick that has been used before, but uh, hasn't really been seen lately uh, to attach malicious content to an Office document. No, it's not a macro this time. It's a template. And the interesting thing with templates is that they don't actually have to be included with a document, but a document may reach out to a URL and then pull them in, which of course makes it more difficult to detect these documents as they're going through your email chain. The document will then be downloaded directly by Word as you're opening the document, sort of at the time the user actually opens it. In this case, the template was no longer available, so sadly Xavier couldn't quite uh, figure out what this template then would have done to the user. Also interesting that the template itself uh, was actually behind sort of a basic authentication uh, URL and the credentials were part of the URL, which again makes it more difficult for someone then to investigate uh, this particular email. I well mentioned Brad earlier and yes, he came through and published yet another one of his walkthroughs on Friday. It was actually a sample that he just looked at the day before. It's Quackbot or Qbot. This particular sample was part of the sort of Obama series of uh, Quackbot. This is metadata that's being added to the malware. This particular one was Obama 271. Uh, they're always incrementing these last uh, three digits or this number being attached uh, that basically sort of labels the particular attack run and appears to be sort of almost incrementing a kind of a daily if you look at the ones that Brad observed the days before. Well, overall, not terribly remarkable as far as the infection chain goes. It arrives as a PDF, uh, which then links to a zip file, which turns out to be a JavaScript file, which then will install the Quackbot DLL and then lead to whatever uh, follow-up activity the attacker decides. Uh, could, for example, be a Cobalt Strike, a Dark Hat VNC and such. Often the attacker may distinguish systems that are joined in Active Directory or not the kind of to identify more valuable systems easily and automatically, which then leads to, for example, some of the better, I guess, uh, payloads like Cobalt Strike. And JumpSec Labs uh, found an interesting vulnerability in Microsoft Teams. It's actually pretty easily exploitable and I think uh, shows some more fundamental problems here with Microsoft Teams implementing security controls on the client. To avoid some of these issues with users opening malicious attachments like uh, what we just talked about with uh, Qbot, Microsoft Teams limits the ability to send files to users within your own organization. So if a stranger from another organization is trying to send you a file as an attachment, well, they will be blocked. 
The problem is that apparently the way it is implemented is just by removing the UI part that allows you to attach files if the recipient is outside your organization. The way JumpSec Labs bypassed this was by basically just starting to write the message to a user in your own organization, attach the file, and then when you're hitting submit, intercept the request with a proxy and flip the destination, flip the recipient to the victim in the other organization, and the file will easily be attached. Pretty neat trick, and like I said, the fundamental problem here is more that uh, direct object reference issue that uh, they're sort of pointing out that as long as you know the URL and what to send, uh, well, the security control had been implemented on the client and not on the server, and with that can easily be bypassed. And the US Army's Criminal Investigation Division is warning that they have received reports of soldiers receiving free smartwatches in the mail. Sounds like this is a little bit of a step up from the old trick of mailing free USB sticks or in the old days CD-ROMs. Not clear what's going on with these smartwatches, what's exactly malicious or if they are malicious. They are recommending not to turn them on, but instead notify your local army CID representative. Now, if you're not a soldier and you still receive a free surprise smart watch in the mail, I would still be careful with it. Uh, likely not to turn it on. Uh, if you have some forensics uh, abilities or such, sure, you know, take a look at what it contains. I'll gladly help you with that if anybody is willing uh, to share any free smart watches they are receiving. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.